Passeiam. Abifanti Akino Sachikide. Gastalia. Go Chalabo Halia. Go Baha. You Jahi Akino. So we're told that Hyundali going to know. Go Haino. Gastali Akino Sachikide. I greet you my first language. You Jaha language. So you Jaha, you know. The old folks, our ancestors. And feel good being over here this evening. And this, it asks the question for me, uh, who owns history? Who tells history? And our presence here, our return here, pay homage. And we realize in our own homelands here that we've been alienated from. But we still can make the connection here, our people that came on this, this trip here, this ongoing work, and realize there's an ongoing struggle always and from the first invasion first encounters you see here and, uh, I'm encouraged here I feel good uh, empowered if you will stronger and uh, it's good to be among our own home homelands here on home, home turf and we realized today that every generation comes forth to our times it's our times here the ongoing struggles. There's always been a struggle of resistance among our people. And we are the evidence in this hemisphere, indig indigenous people, or many nations of our peoples. We're the evidence in this hemisphere, North America, South America, Central America, indigenous populations. And they face the same struggles, ongoing struggles. So, in Solidaire, I come here with, uh, with our Muscogee leaders to represent ourselves here again once upon our own homelands. So, where did Tolly have? Let's say that a little bit. Stanley Gossett. I would think the most important thing is to uh, bring about the awareness of the Indian Religious Freedom Act. And that's what all transpired, and what hasn't transpired out of Well and Gray's, uh, I guess you would say, uh, the uh, situation that he's in right now. Uh, you know, to hear a judge say that he doesn't recognize any of those federal laws, you know, kind of stabs all, all of Indian Indian nation in the heart. Because if the states don't recognize that, then the federal government won't, won't uh, make the states adhere to those laws, then what good are they for the Indians? You know, and it's like he had every right to do and perform a, a ceremony, you know, whether it be a short song, spreading some tobacco, smoking some tobacco, along those lines, having that religious freedom act to do those things. And by being arrested, you know, that, and then putting other charges on it, like uh, disorderly conduct and trespassing. You know, those what those what those laws are there for to protect us, and in this case, they're they're not even being really admitted in court in a sense. You know that that's what hurts all of Indian country, I believe, you know, in my heart, and then that's where we got to press for people in D.C. to make the states adhere to those things for the Indians. That's what it was there for, <laughs> just in my opinion. You know, we're here today at Horseshoe Bend where our people um, you know, were massacred on this field here, uh, over 800. And um, it's kind of a shame that we're here again today. Um, about 200 years later, you know, uh, we were at our ceremonial ground at Hickory Ground, you know, to pray for our ancestors, and uh, we were removed again, you know, 200 years later, you know, still handcuffed and removed from our, our sacred land and burials. And uh, just going into tomorrow, just ready to tell the truth, you know, and, and uh, just see what happens. That's all I can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your feelings about tomorrow? How do you think the case will go? Uh, you know, it's, it's really 50-50, it's really. You know, may, they may put me in jail and they may not. And um, kind of, you know, but it's all in the hands of the creator. So um, whatever the creator thinks needs to happen, what's going to happen. So I won't be upset or anything with the outcome. Okay.